Okay, let's talk about the ACT, and specifically we're going to be talking about ACT math. And of course, if you're watching this uh, video, I assume that you are studying to take the ACT and maybe the SAT as well. But the ACT has really grown in popularity over the years. It's a, it's a really good college entrance exam. It's a good alternative, obviously, to the SAT. And in terms of the math section on the ACT, it is uh, a bit different than the SAT. And I think a lot of students prefer um, the ACT um, test structure in terms of the mathematics versus the SAT. But either way, whether you're taking the ACT or SAT, you're really going to need to know your um, stuff in terms of high school level mathematics. You're going to be really strong in algebra, algebra 1, algebra 2, geometry and maybe even a little bit more advanced mathematics as well. But uh, what I have here is a nice little practice problem that uh, I'm going to go over and cover, uh, something you definitely want to know for the ACT. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm a middle school and high school math teacher, um, and I'm even taught beyond that. And uh, I want to let you know before we get going that if you like my teaching style, I actually offer an ACT math prep uh, course. I'm going to leave the link in this, uh, to that course in the description of this video. But with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. So here's, um, I just got to sketch this out, but I'm going to tell you what I'd like you to do. Okay, so here you got three lines. They all intersect in this one common point, and you got some information here. So let's just kind of start here. You have X degrees, 40 degrees, W degrees, Y degrees, Z degrees, and 80 degrees. Okay, you could just put these variables here, X. Uh, w, Y, and Z, and 80 and 40. So given this information, go ahead and find um, the value of all the variables. Okay, so you want to find out what X, W, Y, and Z is equal to. So this is a pretty basic problem. Um, if you think you could do it, I would uh, encourage you to pause the video and actually, you know, give it a, give it a try. I'm, I'm obviously going to uh, solve it, but I'm going to go ahead and just give you a chance to do it on your own before I get into it. Okay, so let's um, talk about how to do this problem. So a couple things here. One, this is definitely a basic high school level geometry type of problem. So if you struggled with this, you, know, you really got to go back and cover uh, your geometry. Um, for the SAT and ACT, you know, a lot of people kind of think of it's like a 50-50 split, 50% geometry, 50% algebra. Um, actually, I think um, some of these uh, tests, uh, ACT and SAT, skew a little bit more on the algebra side, but there is a significant amount of geometry uh, problems uh, on these tests. So the first thing you need to uh, realize is that we have a bunch of vertical angles here, okay? So 40 and Z are what we call vertical angles. Now, I don't want to turn this into a complete full lesson uh, because that's the point of my course and that's you know that's uh, what you have to do as part of, of your review for the ACT so this should be hopefully kind of review to you okay so these two let me just kind of draw it this way if you have something like this two lines that intersect these lines here or these angles here are called vertical angles and they are congruent they're the same angle and so are these guys right here and that's how we would kind of indicate that uh, uh, with symbols okay so with that being said, okay, well, I could know that Z then is equal to 40 degrees, right? No big deal. And then W is going to be the same as 80. So W is also going to be, uh, it's going to be equal to 80 degrees. So uh, Z is 40 and W is 80. So let's kind of put that over here. Z 40 degrees, W is 80 degrees. So uh, oftentimes these problems are, are pretty, uh, pretty easy if you just you know if you know the principles involved now this leaves us with determining what x and y are now in this case it's not so easy right because we don't have any these are vertical angles but we don't know the value of x or y however what we do know is the following that x 80 and y, uh, z these angles here form a line okay so if i added up angle z plus 80 degrees plus x degrees, okay, that would be 180 degrees, okay? Now we know z now is 40, okay? So what we can do is just basically solve for x. And once I have x, I can get y. So we have 80 plus 40, which of course is going to be 
120. So if you want to do this with your calculator, make sure you don't uh, make a mistake. That's fine. So it's pretty basic math. So 80 plus 40 is 120. So this is 120 degrees right here, these two angles. And we're going to subtract that 120 from the 180 to get with the value of uh, angle X. So this would be 60 degrees. And down here, angle Y will be uh, 60 degree as well. So let's put that here, X is equal to 60 degrees and y is then also equal to 60 degrees. So real basic um, type of problem in geometry. Uh, so angles and angle properties, uh, whether they be vertical angles, is going to be really um, it's very common, uh, commonly tested concept on ACT and SAT. Other ones, a real big popular concept to test is uh, uh, parallel lines. Okay, so you got two parallel lines. Let's call this A and B. So A would be parallel to B. We could also indicate that by having two arrows like this on the line. And then you have some sort of line that crosses through it, a transversal. And this creates all kinds of uh, unique angle properties. So this this kind of stuff as well, these angle properties with parallel lines, very, very um, uh, common as well. So this is a like the minimum minimum kind of level stuff that you really want to know for ACT uh, geometry okay um, but let's go ahead and wrap this video up hopefully you found this very easy um, again if you think that you like uh, learning from me and you uh, want to really cover a lot of uh, mathematics that's going to be in ACT you can check out my ACT math prep course again I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video also I literally have hundreds of videos on my uh, YouTube channel that uh, can definitely uh, help you out. Uh, geometry, algebra, advanced algebra. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing. And if you like this video, definitely appreciate the thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Why are you uh, selecting the ACT over the SAT? Maybe the college you're going to, oftentimes, or the college you're uh, looking to apply to, uh, prefers AT, AT, ACT scores versus SAT scores. So you want to take a look at that as well. But all colleges in, in general are going to um, either look at ACT or, or the SAT, but some I think um, have a preference on, on what test. And again, uh, uh, generally speaking, I think you um, as a student want to find out, you know, which test you seem to perform better on before you go, you know, um, before you commit to really saying, okay, I'm going to go with the ACT and then I'm just going to do the best I can on, I uh, get the best ACT scores I can. Because if you're, if you're studying for the ACT and or SAT, that's pretty difficult. Some of you may be in a position you have to do that, but if you kind of know that you're going to be targeting one test or the other, figure, figure which one you tend to do better in and then kind of commit uh, if you can. Okay. Cause you don't want to, they are different and you don't want to, um, you know, kind of, uh, be studying for too many tests at once. Uh, that's it becomes more difficult to to score, you know, with um, you know to your fullest potential doing it that way. But anyways, leave me some feedback. Um, I try to read these comments. If you have any questions, I'll take a look at this and maybe I can make some future videos. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on uh, ACT and or SAT. Thanks for your time and have a great day.